going to start out with Joe Bettner with the Norman transcript and then go to Jason Kersey. Joe? Ronnie, just with all that you've been through over the past, you know, few months, I'm curious, what was it like being back out on the field on Saturday, making the impact that you've made? Um, it felt good just to be back out there with my teammates, being able to help our team win. It was just a good feeling, you know, uh, just a feeling I haven't had in a long time. So it felt real good to get back out there, but I'm, I'm ready to go again this week. Okay, let's go to Jason Kersey with the Athletic and then Ryan Aber. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, Coach Riley's been very vocal about over the last several months about needing to change the rules that, that got you suspended. I'm just wondering, has it helped knowing that he's in your corner like that publicly? Has that made this process easier for you? Um, I, I can't really speak on, 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 like, the rules and anything, but, I mean, just having a coach support you, it means a lot, you know. Uh, he go all out for his guys. So, yeah, in return on the field, his guys going to go all out for him because we know how hard he back us off the field. Thanks, Ronnie. Okay, let's go to Ryan Aber, the Oklahoman, and then Eric Bailey. Yeah, Ronnie, how do you, when you're out, and especially with all the uncertainty around things, how do you stay engaged with everything? How would you rate your play? on Saturday and how much better do you think you can get uh, quickly, you know, given the rust and, and things you got to shake off? Say one more time, I'm sorry. Just uh, how, did, how did you stay engaged uh, during that whole time mm -hmm. with the uncertainty and everything? And, and how would you rate your play on Saturday? Um, I just, uh, for the last few weeks, I was just focused on coming into practice and helping this team however I could. Uh, and no matter if it was scout team, no matter if it was trying to coach up the young guys. So I was just engaged uh, the whole weekend practice to try to get the team best prepared for Saturday as I could. Um, Saturday, uh, I wouldn't say I could rate my play. I just would say, shoot, uh, I left some plays out on the field. So still got, still got a little rust to knock off, but that's why we practice. So I'm just ready to keep working. Appreciate it, Ronnie. Eric Bailey with Tulsa World and then John Hoover. Hey, Ronnie, just how tough was it to hear that decision being made after the Big 12 game? And who got you through the tough days when you really missed playing football so much? Um, can you ask again? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. Um, how tough was it to hear about the decision being made after the Big 12 game? And then just who got you through the tough days when you missed playing football so much? Um, I don't really want to talk about uh, the previous, but – uh, really just my teammates, my teammates and my coaches. Uh, being a part of this football team really, really helped a lot. You know, uh, I can say we really got each other's backs no matter what. Thank you, Ronnie. Okay, John Hoover with SI Sooners and then Bob Chris Billow. Hey, Ronnie, I wonder if you could describe maybe your level of frustration just over the past few weeks of, you know, since the news was announced or, or broke kind of against uh, before the Iowa State game how your status kind of changed and then it was, then you weren't on the sideline. It just seems kind of all over the place. What were, what were you going through at that, at that time? Um, uh, I mean, uh, as a person, it's easy to get our head, uh, get our head scrambled, but um, I really just trust, trusted the process, uh, trusted Coach Riley, trusted my team. And uh, they would like coaches over me to stay locked in and I was trusting God. So like, I, I really just left with all the lay hands and whenever I, I was uh, going to get my opportunity. I, I'll be ready for it. Then real quick, could you describe the scene on Friday night? You say on Friday night? Yeah, when you guys heard the news. Yeah, it kind of it kind of turned into a little, almost a little a little riot inside the little meeting room. <laughs> so uh, it, it was a couple of chairs uh, flipped over. You know, I had to shake a lot of hands. I had a lot of hugs to give out. But it was, it was a great feeling, you know. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Bob Prisbilla with Sooner Scoop and then Kayla McCurry. Yeah, Ronnie, clearly you didn't want to be out, but what was it like to watch someone like Isaiah Thomas really step up since you, you weren't in the lineup? Uh, it, sound, it, it looked great. Uh, so I'm still, like, to this day, I'm, like, I'm, I'm so happy for him. You know, he's been here for a long time. So, like, it, it's, finally see him, it's finally good to see him, like, start to take those strides, become a better football player, and being one of the top D linemen in our conference. So, I got nothing but happiness for him, man. I tell him that every day, like, 
dog, you doing it, you balling, man. Like, you got to keep this up. Okay, Caleb McCurry with OU Daily, and then Parker Thune. Ronnie, from March to, uh, to June, when the team was separated because of COVID, how did you stay in shape? How did you, how did you keep in contact with all the rest of the players? Just how did you get through that time? Um, I mean, it, it wasn't hard. We, we were doing a lot of Zoom meetings between that time. Um, just had a lot of training going on. Um, I went to Houston to get some training in. Went back home, continued my training. Uh, it was kind of hard trying to find open gyms with everything with the pandemic first hitting, but um, eventually I found me a good gym. So uh, I just took it upon myself really like to keep myself in shape, keep myself in football shape for eventually when we were returning to campus. Thanks, Ronnie. Yeah, let's go to Parker Thune with SI Sooners. Yeah, Ronnie, uh, just curious. Nick Benito is one of the highest graded pass rushers in the country by a lot of metrics. So uh, now that you're back and you got, uh, now that you're lining up on one side of that line and you got Nick on the other side, what do you think your guys' ceiling is? What kind of havoc do you think you can wreak on Big 12 quarterbacks and offensive lines? Um, I feel like we could be probably the most dominant, uh, dominant edge forces in, in, in the conference and probably in the country. So, um, so we just got to keep putting our work in and eventually everything everything will come together for us. But I definitely believe we could be one of the top duos and one of the top D-lines in the country. Okay, and let's go to James Hale with KREF. Hey, Ronnie, you look good when you got out there right away and you looked explosive. And I'm just curious, uh, you know, you've, you've started so many games, but you hadn't played in six games. So was it like riding a bike? As soon as you got in the stance, everything was normal? Or, I mean, how – uh, what was that like for you to get out there and get going? Because you look good, man. Uh, it, it felt great, you know. Um, you know, after six games, you still going to feel like a little deer in the headlights. But once it gets going, it gets going. Now. So, yeah. um, like, once I just touch the field, all I tell myself is calm down and get the play and tell myself my job and I execute. So, it's, uh, you basically say, like, riding a bike. Yeah, it's just like riding a bike, man. As long as you got a clear mind, I'll be all right. How good did it, did it feel to chase? You know, you, had, you got after that running back that broke it, and you were one of the guys running him down. Uh, they kind of get the cobwebs out? Yeah, yeah, they got some cobwebs out. I also noticed, like, dang, I'm not tired neither. So I knew I went, I knew I went out of shape. So, uh, it kind of felt good. It knocked some cobwebs off for me. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. And one more, Ronnie. Let's go to Barry Trammell with the Oklahoman. Uh, yeah, Ronnie, a little bit off the, off the field of play question. Um, it was sort of a turbulent summer with a lot of social justice issues and, and things like that. You athletes really got involved. I had a question. The, the general public that comes and comes to the stadium and cheers you on or watches on TV, what do you want them to know about you guys that they don't know? What, what, is, um, what is something they don't know that you'd like them to know? Um, probably we, we more than athletes. That's probably the biggest thing. Like, we people, we, we we also people, after we take the Oklahoma jersey off, like, we humans too. So, like, we could feel a certain way about certain topics. Um, everybody not going to always agree on certain topics, but sometimes you just got to de uh, de to disagree. So, I mean, uh, we human at the end of the day. We're going to have feelings toward, uh, toward certain things that others not going to agree with. So, we just got to agree to disagree.